Dave and Wanda here from WGRC for another episode of Around the Valley. And Wanda, this is your first episode. This is my very first. Looking forward to learning something new about our very own community. Well, this may be your first episode of Around the Valley. And this is where each month we upload a brand new episode as you highlight for us, you teach us about your craft, hobbies, occupations, or we get a behind the scenes look at a local attraction, which is what's happening today as we are here at the Stuart Tank Memorial Museum. Wanda, you mentioned about our local community. These tanks were used in World War II and they were built right here in Central PA in Berwick. And it's gonna be pretty cool. Are you excited to go see what it's about? I'm very excited. So, you know, in school, I wasn't a history buff by any means, but the older I get, the more that I appreciate the history behind um, not just our communities, but the world in general. So I'm fascinated. I'm excited to find out some new things. All right, I'm just glad that you're the one that used the word older about yourself. I'm not going to use that. <laughs> Let's go on in. WGRC's Around the Valley is sponsored by Zook Septic Services, serving central Pennsylvania. Contact them for inspections, repairs, and system maintenance needs at 570-837-1466 or at zooksepticcom By thy grace and by the righteousness of our cause, our sons will triumph. They will be sore tried by night and by day without rest. Help us, Almighty God, to rededicate ourselves in renewed faith in thee in this hour of great sacrifice. Must be Tom. Nice to meet you. This is where we highlight local attractions and the Stuart Tank right here in Central PA. We're excited to learn about it. So Tom, I know we are saving the star of the show until last, which is the Stuart Tank. There's actually one in this building. But tell us a little bit about the museum itself. How long has it been around? How did it come to be? Uh, the museum actually opened up in April. And Fairly new. We've already wow. had over 700 visitors. We've had uh, visitors from the Czech Republic, from Sweden, from Australia, from Germany, and from just about every state in the Union so far. It's, it's been amazing. And uh, we actually started trying to bring a tank home back in 2004. It's been a long, slow process, but it's all volunteers and all donations. And uh, we finally got to that point where we have the museum. We have two tanks, one on loan, one that we own. We have a Berwick-built bulldozer from World War II that's uh, being uh, restored. And uh, we have our World War II weekend in July, and we take the show on the road as well as the museum itself. So you mentioned Berwick. What is the local connection to the tanks? The American Car and Foundry was started in 1820, building railroad cars for the mining uh, here in northeastern Pennsylvania, the anthracite mines. And during the war, they uh, competed for a contract to build uh, tanks for the military. Going into World War II, the U.S. Army only had about 300 tanks. Wow. And uh, Berwick uh, American Car and Foundry competed with Baldwin Locomotive for the first uh, tanks to be built by a private contractor on an assembly line for the military. And Berwick won that contest. And their first order was for 300 tanks. Wow. They called their suppliers and uh, told them how much armor plate they needed. And uh, they were told that they hung up on them. And so they turned around and they built their own furnaces. Wow. They started out with three furnaces. By the end of the war, they had 16 furnaces producing armor plate. And they were the largest producer of armor plate in the United States. And every armored vehicle made in the United States during World War II had some Berwick armor plate mm -hmm. on it. Well, World War II is considered, the, those folks that lived during that time, the greatest generation. And I know uh, not only do we have a local connection to the tank, but a local connection to a lot of people. And they've donated items that you have in the museum. How about if we go take a look at some of the history of World War II? Certainly. that was drawn up 
back in the uh, 1940s, and it shows the towns and the number of workers that were here at the plant. Berwick only had 10,000 people at the time, but there were 9,135 workers at the factory, and they uh -huh. came from 177 different municipalities around northeastern Pennsylvania, all the way from Clark Summit to Williamsport to New Tripoli, a Sealands Grove. Wow. They came in by train and by bus. Well, a lot of the locals, uh, either the veterans themselves or the family members, they have have donated some World War II memorabilia. Tell us a little bit about the case uh, behind you. What are we seeing? Obviously a lot of weaponry, but what exactly are we looking at? We have a number of rifles, mostly sniper rifles. Uh, Russian, German, Czech, Polish, even Japanese that most are uh, donated, a few were on loan to us, and then we have uh, mach a German machine gun and a Luger pistol as well as some uh, some medals that were earned by local veterans, Bronze Star, Good Conduct Medal, Purple Heart. And what a, a, an amazing opportunity that people here in Central PA have because, let's face it, we're losing a lot of our World War II veterans yeah. and what a great way to keep their memory alive, the work that they did, not only those directly in the military, but all the ancillary uh, support as well. My dad served in the Navy during the Korean War. He, he had he would have like six different books around the house that he would be reading simultaneously. <laughs> and one of the first books he gave me was uh, Guadalcanal Diary hmm. about uh, the invasion and uh, uh, of Guadalcanal, one of our first big battles during the Second World War in the Pacific. Hmm. And from there it, it just grew and then I found out about the tanks that were built here and nearly everyone in town had some relatives that worked at the factory at one yeah. point or another. Uh, I see a picture behind you, which I believe is a group of relatives. They all have the same name. They're all wearing a uniform. Tell us a little bit about this family. Who are they? And uh, why are they all in uniform? There was eight brothers that all served at the same time it, wow. during the Second World War. Some in the uh, Marine, Army, Navy. And, and being in the military is definitely a family affair. So not only ones that, that go, but mom and dad or, or their siblings uh, that are left behind. And, and here this family, uh, a, a large number of them going to serve their country. We have a gentleman on our board. He has a uh, photograph of his grandfather, his father, and his eight uncles all, all in a group photo at the factory wow. during the production of all this equipment. Very cool. Mm. You know, as a mom, I can't even begin to imagine what it would be like to have nine children serving at the same time. Incredible then, respect for her. And then yeah. as, a, as a mom, you would appreciate the fact that there were so many of our own Rosie Derivators. Mm. We have photographs of uh, women working lathes and yeah. welding machines and yeah. inspections and yeah. so that they could free up the men so they could go out off the military. So this is a really cool room. Yeah. Like history comes to life when I can visualize what things might have looked like at one time. So tell me about this room. Okay. In this area here, we have some artifacts from the factory itself. The desk came from the factory, the telephone, the typewriter. Uh, we have an aerial photograph of the uh, factory complex itself. It's a half a mile wide by a mile long. Wow. So the, the people of Berwick definitely have a, a proud history that they should be proud of the, with the effort that's taking place in what well, really is a small town but had a global impact. Absolutely. In 1938, Hitler already had in his mind sooner or later he was going to have to fight the United States. Mm -hmm. He tried to develop a bomber that would reach the East Coast from the Azor Islands in the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. Luckily, for us, not luckily for Russians, he decided to attack Russia and all his resources went in that direction and the bomber never got built. Mm -hmm. But we have a display here where he actually picked 19 targets that he wanted to take out on the East Coast and one of them was Berwick because of the tank manufacturing and the armor plate that was built here. Mm -hmm. So people had their blackout curtains here in Berwick. Here in Berwick. Uh, we had civil defense workers. Uh, there were watchtowers on the mountaintops, and we haven't verified it yet, but we've been told that at one point, on the other side of the mountain north of here, in a farmer's field, they set up streetlights. Hmm. 
so that if bombers came in at night, they shut the lights off in Burke and turned those on, and they bombed the, the <laughs> farmer's nice. fields and sent the town. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, see, also, we apparently got the kids involved in the war effort, as I see what appears to be a, a pedal car, a, kid, a child's car behind you. Tell us a little bit about that. This actually uh, belongs to one of our board members. Her grandfather bought it for her father in the 1940s while they were during the war while they're still making the tanks. And it's a, a pedal car kind of made to look like a tank. Yeah. She actually pedaled it in the kids' parade when she was little. It's the same exact engine that's on a Stearman biplane. Oh, wow. Uh, it's uh, rated at uh, 250 horsepower. It worked out well because the tank ended up doing 35 miles an hour mm. when all other tanks at that time did about nine. Well, Tom, you all uh, have done a great work bringing history to life. We've learned a lot today about not only life in Berwick during World War II, but World War II in general. All the, the men and women, even the kids, as we saw the, the pedal car getting involved in the war effort. But the museum, all of that leads up to the tank, the Stewart tank. How about if we take a look at that? So Tom, as we're, we're standing here at the tank and, and holding some of the, the armament, uh, they, they all serve a different purpose, you've been explaining to us. Were these loaded uh, one at a time by personnel? Were they on a chain? How did that work? They were all loaded one at a time. Wow. Uh, the, gun, the gunner and the uh, tank commander worked together to, to lo load the gun, sight it, and fire. And what was the pro or how long was that process? Uh, depends okay. on how, what you what we're shooting at. <laughs> you can get pretty fast if you really no, wanted sure to, to if you needed to. Yeah. Uh, probably uh, about a, a minute to two minutes okay. to go through the whole process. And then uh, a full crew for a tank. Was that three people? You had the four-man crew. You had 140 shells for the main gun. You had 7,500 rounds for the 330 caliber machine guns they had. You had 750 rounds for their 45 automatic pistols, and they had one Thompson submachine gun and a crate of grenades. This tank obviously has a lot of history, no telling uh, over the years how many uh, people have climbed in and out of that while it was in service. Can we add two more to the uh, <laughs> roster of who's been in it? Hey, it's your knees and elbows. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Tom, thank you so much for hosting us and for sharing your passion for history with us. It's been a really, really cool experience. Um, I think one of the things that hit me the hardest is sitting here and realizing that this was um, this was real for for our military and and the the things that are in the museum. Somebody wore each of those hats and somebody wore each of those coats, um, and it 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 just it humbles me and I'm so grateful for their service. And Tom, as we walk through the museum, having been in the Navy myself and served on a World War II ship, it is amazing to be able to be sitting in a World War II tank, learning more about the time period of when my ship was built mm -hmm. as I served on her a number of years later, obviously, but it's all attached to World War II, to the 40s. And what a gem uh, we have here in Berwick, right here in Central PA. Uh, so thank you to you and, and the staff here, the board here, for allowing us to just uh, experience a little bit of your museum. We appreciate you stopping by and uh, 
helping us share our message with the public and help them educate them about the contributions the areas made to uh, the World War II effort. And uh, if you had only seen about a quarter of uh, what we have here in the museum. Wow. So please stop by and uh, we'll show you the rest of it. And you certainly are invited to stop by. Be sure to catch the contact information at the end of this episode for the Stuart Tank Memorial Museum right here in Berwick, Pennsylvania. It's a gem, a lot of history, and something that Berwick and Central PA should be proud of. Well, be sure to connect with us. We'd love to know your ideas for an upcoming episode of Around the Valley. We are looking for you to teach us your craft, hobbies, occupations, or maybe give us an idea of a place of interest to visit. You can send those suggestions to this email address, morningshow at wgrc.com. We are Dave and Wanda, and who knows, we may just see you around the valley. valley.